Hello, this is Brendan Schumacher, and in this episode we're going to have a look at this uh, illustration, which I'm still working on, in fact, but uh, maybe not do any drawing in this particular episode. I didn't really prepare for time lapse or anything, but I haven't made a video in a long time, and I thought this was uh, a little educational, quite interesting of an illustration to look at. I still have more layers than I wish I did. I like to have like three or four at the most and kind of merge things, but um, which I still can do. I might do that, but a little apprehensive right now because some of these layers, I'm not sure if I got them exactly where I want them. What we have here is a two-point perspective uh, thing where if I go all the way back, let me take all these off. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff there. We go back to the very beginning, and I just had these lines here. And uh, by the way, these are in the, if you want to like and subscribe to this channel, if you're watching it or wherever you are, find me, uh, you know, follow me or something for my upcoming courses, which I'm working on. This one is for a course on Udemy where I'll be teaching how to do perspective drawing. So as you can see, the uh, the outcome here, even though it's, it seems very complicated at times, the outcome is uh, this type of uh, illustration here. I don't know if I have a, yeah, I need a, but it, you'll see in a minute, kind of like that. So it's like a corner of a city street. But it started off just like this, very basic, where you have the two-point perspective, vanishing points. And uh, in the lesson, I go through that. It was many lessons. It's a whole course. It has three sections and uh, many, many lessons to it. And then I go through bit by bit of how to develop the line work. So you get you know all these uh, fancy lines, which are the guidelines that help you to build up the final line work, which is this. And this here looks all right within itself. But um, looking at all of these lines, which I can't remember the exact word, but uh, just this type of black and line work without any light and shade can be hard on the eye for a lot of people. I personally appreciate this type of work. I like it. And uh, I mean, you have to use your imagination a bit. But uh, for starters, you want to add a little, a little light and shade in there. And I don't know why this one doesn't. Yeah, it's supposed to be a yellowish kind of color. But uh, there's something to cover with that, too. Now, as you can see here, one of the important things, and this is something that I can uh, bring up before I show the color, is that a lot of people, they kick and scream if you use white light, uh, pure white light, such as I did uh, here. If I turn this off, you can see it's a little bit yellow. I didn't really emphasize it too much because I want the light to be light. And the more color you add to a light layer, the more saturation of color you add, it actually gets kind of gray in uh, in the hue or you know value actually, not the hue but the value. So the value I didn't want the value to go too dark. So but if you zoom in, you can see the light areas just have a touch of that yellowish kind of color to them because the sun, they say, actually casts a yellow color and the complementary color to yellow. Um, or non-complementary. I don't know if it's complementary or supplementary or whatever, but it, they just say the shadow color comes out blue. And there's a scientific explanation for that, which I'm not going into because I just don't have the vocabulary for it, <laughs> but I understand this. So if you have a white, a pure white light, it should give a pure black shadow is basically what they're getting at. But a yellow light should give a blue shadow. That is the theory. Whether or not that's 100% scientifically accurate, I don't even want to get started. I'm not quite sure. But I added, in addition to that, this color layer. So, And I had to erase some of it. Because you see here the sign. If I add the sign there, I wanted to erase some of that area around uh, what we have up here. Let me turn this layer on. In this area, I had to for this Viva sign, I had to erase some of the, the shade layer because obviously there's not going to be shade where there's light. And you might think, oh, I can just, you know, draw over that with white. But then you're getting a white mixed with the, the blue or the black shade and it comes out gray. So in areas where you think there might be some glow or some light, you have to erase the shade out of that too. And you see, I also did that back here because um, technically this whole side of the building here would be in shade. But I thought if they're inside the building and it's an office and these are windows here, then there's probably some light on in the office and so it, it would emit some glow and that would cancel out the shade so it would no longer be dark there anymore. So I had to erase the shade in those areas. But that looks kind of funny if you only look at the shade layer now uh, with the other layers uh, turned off. 
So yeah, if you look at it like that, it looks weird. And also, uh, the opacity has to come down. Now another important thing with this, let me just turn all the layers back on, is that um, this is kind of a lesson for me too. I normally with the light and shade layers before I solidify them and merge them, or uh, it's actually kind of nice to not merge them. I usually just keep them separate so I can always change, uh, you know, how much light or how much shade. But what I did is I decided to use multiply this time and it came out a lot better. So in GIMP, and if you're in Photoshop, you should know this, every layer has uh, sort of a style or an effect that you can add to it. And so the default is to be normal. So let's look at the light layer here and I'll turn the opacity all the way up. And as you can see, it's that yellowish white, uh, eggshell white kind of color, right? And I can bring the opacity down like this. And then with the, uh, the shade layer, again, I'll turn it back to normal and you can see if I bring the opacity all, all the way up and we'll slide it down to where it looks normal. But when I do it like this, notice how it's kind of foggy. And I made a copy of it right here um, in a previous version. Or actually, let me just go ahead and make a copy right now and say right click on the top area and say new from visible. So there's a copy of the whole image, which we'll save and I'll use again in a minute. And I just want to delete these two. And then what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to turn these light and shade layers from normal. So they're still blue and, you know, the opacity is still the same. But I'm going to change them from normal to multiply. And look at how it blends in a lot better. Right? So I still can feel my color layer here. I can, I can still feel the strength, the saturation of the color. And it's still there, it still has light, it's a little bit more subtle, the light layer is a lot more subtle, but it's blending in a lot better. And I don't know, again, the exact science of why or how that is, but it works out really well. So, and to make the comparison, let me go up here and make n another new from visible. So here is the, the current version, and here's the, uh, when I click the eyeball, we'll see, this is the previous version where I was not using multiply. I was just lowering the opacity of the shade layers. So using multiply allows the bottom layers to come through a lot better. And it, here it is, you know, without multiply. And I used to think that just lowering the opacity of a shade layer would do the trick. But the richness of the color kind of gets fogged out. That's that's kind of something that happens right there. So, and there's other ways around that. Maybe I could lower the opacity even more, or I could raise the the hue, uh, not the hue, raise the saturation for all of the colors on the color layer. But I found that multiply layer like that just worked out. It it just gives a better result. Now I feel guilty when I do this because I started off with traditional art, and uh, it makes you realize how amazingly talented the uh, the ancient masters were to be able to uh, do all of this stuff you know with a shade and light and here I am on a software I just flick a switch on a layer and, and it changes and fixes everything I don't know if I can confidently say that I've, I would ever be able to reach a level uh, of you know getting all around good shade and light and everything at a, and make it look realistic in, uh, in something like oil paints I've done some work that came out well it's still a cartoony and it was fun, interesting to look at, maybe. But uh, yeah, to be able to get those, uh, to be able to change everything, it's something you just can't do on traditional. Well, that's about it. <clears throat> I guess you can, you know, you can do stuff with traditional. You can paint over things, and there's a lot of trial and error. But it's just so much more difficult. So that's nice to have that multiply layer, and. Uh, I started adding details here like the bricks. It's a lot of fun this illustration too because the more that I started to think about it and play with it, I was like, uh, maybe there should be more people here and maybe I need more shine, you know, on the car. Like for example, there's these are things I'm planning to do, haven't done yet, and the car here should have a, a more like a highlights and reflective light cuz you can see obviously that the sun is uh, quite strong and with the shadows coming in, you know, it's it's like the sun is over here and here's a little arrow the sun's coming that way and so that's why you can see all the shadows of the people in the buildings are kind of going towards the left like that and uh, you can see I have reflection here because it's supposed to be a, a glossy glassy surface on that building and you know on and on it goes I just started to think of all these details about how the light 
and shade should react and uh, the reflections from the glass in the window and right now I still feel like it's too cartoony but it can be improved for example this area here uh, it just looks like too flat like it's plastic or something maybe it should have some kind of uh, texture to it and there's a lot of areas that should uh, have some more texture even the brick here I mean it's a lot of detail and a lot of work I did to draw those bricks out um, I mean I got it done within 15 minutes you know again using software and and some cheap tricks uh, a little bag of tricks maybe not cheap tricks might be expensive tricks even who knows but uh, yeah just using some tricks got that done and so but the interesting thing about it is that I just never want to stop you know what about the grass and the leaves and all this and go on and on and it doesn't really feel like a piece of art as much as it does uh, cheap illustration until you get all that stuff done because if you want to keep someone's attention and have them look at something for a long time then you have to make all of these interesting little things otherwise it's just a, a five second look like ah that's nice and then click move on to the next thing in today's world <laughs> right so still a nice illustration as it is but I'm gonna keep working on it um, but yeah if anything to be learned I thought it was interesting and I just had to get a new video up in a long time I think over a month so I've been very busy but hopefully things should slow down with work and I'll be doing more videos recently if you want to donate go to you should find below or around there somewhere a patreon link and uh, or go to my website or something and I'm sure there's something or just share that's good if you share things because when you share I get more views and it brings more audience and it helps me to uh, to promote more things so my goal right now is to get uh, a, you know as much of an audience to build up an audience as much as I can and then after that uh, hopefully in the meantime still working on learning some stuff myself and helping people to learn along the way and then uh, you know make a little community out of the whole thing hopefully those are the hopes high hopes <laughs> keep your hopes high if not then what did I lose nothing okay I had fun all along the way I love making these videos so uh, yeah that's it for now we'll see you in the next episode or go to Udemy and search my name or look the links below if you want to find some other stuff to to look at if you're bored and uh, see you later have a good day